So you've probably got an aquarium with some angelfish in there and you're probably looking to add a few more things to the aquarium that will spice it up and make a beautiful community fish tank. Well, you're in luck because in today's video I'm giving you guys 10 of the best species to add to an angelfish aquarium. So make sure you stay around to the end of the video to listen to all the things I'm going to say. going everyone welcome back to keep fish simple so in today's video I'm giving you guys a list of the 10 best fish to add to an angel fish aquarium like the one I have here um, to make a beautiful community display so today I'm gonna give you guys 10 different ideas and 10 different fish that go really really well with, with some angel fish in an aquarium if you're new to the channel and you haven't already seen some of my content I make lots of aquarium related information videos as well as some little entertaining ones so please consider subscribing also, if you guys haven't checked out the Facebook group, that's in the description below. Uh, feel free to go and join that if you guys need some help with some advice. We've got a beautiful community growing on there. Uh, heaps of members and heaps of active uh, posts, people sharing pictures of their aquariums. It's just a really good community. So, if you guys want to go and check that out, please feel free. The link's in the description below and I'm sure that there'll be heaps of people over there that'll be able to help you with any problems you have. Alright, without any further ado, let's get started on the video. So, before I start giving you the list, I'm going to give you guys a few heads up before you add any fish to the aquarium and I'm also going to give you guys a few uh, fish that you should definitely never add to an aquarium with some angelfish in there. So I see heaps of people make the mistakes of adding small tetras to the aquariums with angelfish in there and those things are like cardinal tetras, neon tetras, um, harlequin rasboras don't go well and black skirt tetras. Now it's really important that you don't add these fish to the aquarium. Uh, because the angel fish do get quite big and they might be able to fit some of these fish into their mouths. Now keeping in mind I've kept these fish in my angel fish aquariums in the past. I've had neon tetras in the same tank and I haven't had any problems but I've heard a lot of instances where a lot of people have had issues with the angel fish eating their fish and uh, especially with these species I've just mentioned um, it's really important not to not to try and experiment unless you want to um, and just be aware that they could be eaten. Alright, with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to start on the list. So, number one on the list is the Corydori catfish. Now, I've kept Corydoris uh, in the past. I absolutely love these fish. They are a bottom dwelling uh, catfish from South America and they have uh, the tendency to just go along the bottom of the aquarium and sift through the sand and eat lots of the debris that falls to the bottom of the tank. Corydoris are a schooling fish and they make an absolutely awesome display when you have a group of about six or more in an aquarium. And I'm absolutely in love with the Corydoris. I haven't kept Corydoris for a couple of years, but they go really, really well in an angelfish aquarium, especially with lots of food falling to the bottom of the tank. Now, there are a few important things to note when keeping Corydoris, and that is that they can't have a very rigid uh, substrate. So, Corydoris like a sand substrate or a very, very fine gravel substrate that they can sift through because otherwise it will damage their barbs and cause a lot of problems for them uh, heading into the future. It's also important to note that Corydoris should be always kept in schools because that's how they live in the wild. So you need a larger aquarium to house uh, a large amount of Corydoris. But they do stay very small and uh, they're very, very easy to take care of and go awesome in any community aquarium as they're very, very peaceful. So the next fish on the list is the Bolivian rams. Now Bolivian rams are almost as beautiful as the German blue rams but not quite as beautiful, but they definitely go really, really well in an angelfish aquarium and will definitely spice up a fish tank that is pretty boring. And if you want to make a beautiful community aquarium, uh, these guys have a bit of nip to them, a bit of bite. Uh, they're, they're pretty feisty little uh, fish and they go really, really well in a community aquarium, especially with angelfish like the ones I have back there. Bolivian rams are about an intermediate on the care level. Uh, they're, they're very easy to take care of, but they are a little bit more frail than other species that you can keep in your tank. Uh, but they do go really well together. And Bolivian rams, like most dwarf cichlids, come from South America and they're pretty much just a small version of the cichlid. They stay relatively small and they uh, do have the tendency to get a bit aggressive, especially with breeding. So that's something to keep in mind. It's best that you keep uh, Bolivian rams and most dwarf cichlids in pairs with a male and a female and that way the males won't fight and that's just the best way to keep them. So the next fish on the list is the German blue ram. Now the German blue ram is a very beautiful fish. I've kept them in the past and I've kept them in a community aquarium with annual fish and they tend to keep each other alone. Um, they're both very, very uh, beautiful fish and German blue rams have this beautiful electric color and they just create a beautiful display. They can get a bit feisty, they're quite similar to the Bolivian rams and they're just a little bit of a different appearance. Uh, you can breed these guys, it's a bit difficult but if you're looking for something to breed for profit um, and keep in your community aquarium, you can give these guys a try. Uh, you might get eggs and you might be able to raise those eggs up. 
So the next fish on the list is guppies. Now you guys were probably guessing that I was already gonna mention guppies. Uh, you've heard me praise guppies in previous videos and if you haven't heard me praise guppies, go and check out those videos. Uh, uh, heaps of information there for all you guys, but guppies are a live bearer. They stay very small and they're very peaceful and easy to take care of. Guppies come in heaps of colors and will always have babies every 22 days and they're just super easy to take care of. So they go really good in a community aquarium. If you're setting up an aquarium for kids, I would definitely recommend getting some guppies. Uh, guppies are one of the best fish to add to any community aquarium. They spice it up. Males have heaps of different colors, blues, yellows, anything you can really think of. And I love, uh, guppies are one of my favorite fish in the whole entire aquarium hobby. So the next fish on the list is the Crevensis cichlid. Now I keep Crevensis in the bottom aquarium over there. I've been breeding them for a couple of months and I've got a little bit bored of it, but they go really, really well in community aquariums. Now, these guys are a dwarf cichlid, but they're actually from West Africa, unlike a lot of the other dwarf cichlids that you can find in the hobby. Now, they display very good colors and they're definitely one of the easiest dwarf cichlids to keep in the hobby. They don't take much uh, to breed. They're very easy to breed and they lay a lot of eggs. So, if you've got a cave or like a coconut shell in the aquarium, they'll go in there and they'll burrow and they'll make bait, uh, they'll make eggs and then they will take care of the eggs unless they get eaten by other fish in the aquarium. I've got plenty of videos on these guys, so if you guys want to go and check those out, out there also uh, I'll add them down below along with a bunch of other things that you can go and check out after this video but I definitely re recommend trying these guys out if you haven't tried them out and you've been in the hobby for a while um, they're a bit different they're pretty common and they're pretty beautiful so next on the list I thought I might add something a bit more spicy and that's the coolie loach now I haven't had much experience with coolie loaches I know a lot about them but I haven't kept them in the past now coolie loaches stay very small and they're a bottom dwelling nocturnal fish so they don't come out during the day uh, they come out at night and they display beautiful little colors. So they look like a worm, uh, they're about this big and they are very, very uh, tame normally. So they won't come out during the day but they do add a really cool centerpiece to most community aquariums and they are housed in a lot of community aquariums across the hobby. I think if you go to most YouTubers they would have uh, coolie loaches in their aquariums. I don't keep the coolie loach because I don't see much point because I do a lot of breeding. But coolie loaches do create a really good uh, display and they're very personable fish. So next on the list is mollies. Now mollies are very similar to platys. Uh, they're live bearers. They are pretty much the guppy, but in a different shape. They're very easy to take care of. There's not a lot of information I can give you on the mollies because they are just so simple. Um, they have babies quite often and you don't really need to put any effort into breeding them. Mollies take pretty much every food that you can get your hands on. They are very peaceful and they won't attack or harm your angelfish. With mollies in mind, that comes to my next fish and that's the platy. Now the platys are very very similar to the mollies. I've kept platys my whole time in the aquarium hobby. They are an awesome fish and they go great together. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the platys. They're a live bearer, easy to feed, easy to care for and I'm sure that if you are setting up an aquarium for kids uh, any live bearer is really good in an angelfish aquarium. So the next species I'm going to talk about is the cherry barbs. Now I could get a bit of slack for saying this but cherry barbs are a very good fish to add to um, aquariums to add a bit of spice and a bit of zest in the aquarium. Uh, they're known to be a bit nippy, but when kept in about groups of six or more, uh, they probably wouldn't hurt your annual fish. Now, keep in mind, you might have to separate some fish for bullying, but 98% uh, of the time, I think that if you add cherry barbs to an angel fish aquarium, that you will see uh, success. They won't hurt the angel fish unless you're not feeding or you've got them in too small a tank. Cherry barbs are quite aggressive. They're an intermediate level of care, but they are pretty easy to take care of and they go pretty well in an angel fish aquarium. And I thought I might add this just to add a bit of spice to your aquarium because I know that a lot of people like to see those piranha-like fish and cherry barbs are a very aggressive eater and they're definitely one of those fish. Right, so the final fish on the list is bristlenose. Now bristlenose are perfect for all aquariums. Now I would add bristlenose to all my aquariums but I don't have enough at the moment. I'm still breeding a bunch and I'm still breeding them for profit and these fish are awesome. Now if you've got an aquarium and you're trying to keep an aquarium with your kids, uh, bristlenose are an awesome centerpiece fish to add to your tank. Bristlenose are an algae eater so they keep the tank pretty clean. Doesn't mean that you don't have to do water changes. You still have to do water changes unfortunately. But bristlenose are an awesome fish to add to your aquarium because they eat algae, they keep the levels of the green down in the aquarium, and they look quite funky. Bristlenose plecos are like all bristlenose catfish. I like the plecos for the except for the fact that they have bristles and they stay very, very small. So they go really good in about 20 gallon aquarium. Also important to note that bristlenose are very easy to breed, so you can add them to an aquarium, and if you add a little cave or something in there and you feed them well, 
Uh, they will breed and they'll lay eggs and they're, they're very easy to take care of. And bristlenose take a wide range of foods. I feed mine algae wafers, zucchini, pretty much everything they eat flakes from the bottom of the tank and they are pretty messy so you have to do quite a few water changes but they are awesome fish to add to the aquarium. So that pretty much wraps up the video guys. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, as I said, there's links to all the videos down below that you can watch about the fish I've talked about. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.